Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Jason Kemmers, superintendent here at Richmond Public Schools. Um, before we get started, if we could just recognize our school board members in attendance. Uh, Ms. Gibson, uh, I know Ms. Page is here, and Ms. Dorr, I know Ms. Owen is somewhere. There she is. Anybody Dr. else? And Dr. Sabini is, is behind the screen doing the important work. Um, anybody else? Okay. Um, I know there has been a great deal of uh, discussion and feedback, questions and whatnot since our last meeting. Uh, we want to make sure that we maximize our time together and uh, I can see that we may not have done that in the past and so we're going to try a structure today to see how that goes and maybe use it as a template going forward. So uh, we, we're thinking about tonight in terms of three chunks. First chunk uh, being an opportunity to ask clarifying questions about options three and four which uh, I believe uh, you received uh, late last week, is that correct? Yes. Um, and so we wanted you to have an opportunity to ask uh, Mr. Carper if there were any things that didn't quite make sense or you wanted clarified or understood to have the chance to ask uh, Mr. Carper at that time. Not a um, discussion about the worth, value, or appeal of those options, just getting clarity on anything uh, that there might not be clarity on. That would be chunk one, and we do that as a whole group. Chunk two, uh, in regional groups, uh, the goal would be to surface a list of issues that need to be tackled. Um, I think one of the challenges we're having is there are lots of different things swirling, different issues, different parts of the city, and what we'd like to do tonight is get a comprehensive list from the committee of what are all the issues we thought doing that regionally is probably the best idea. Along with the list of issues, any new ideas that you have, you've heard of, uh, you've seen discussed on social media, uh, so that we can have a list of issues and any other creative ideas for future iterations of the plan that we can service and catalog. And then, the, that's a significant chunk of time, then we'll have a share of opportunity for that. Then the third chunk that we'd like to do, again, uh, back in, in the regional groups, is if there are any concrete, specific data points that the committee would like, and if there's any specific uh, decisions or guidance from the school board, I know that's been raised as well about certain uh, directions to chart those as well. So that we'd end up with a night, number one, having a clear understanding of options three and four, number two, a full catalog from the committee's perspective of all of the issues that need to be fully addressed by the committee along with that potential other creative solutions um, that have been surfaced or that you would like to surface this evening. And then finally, key data points and guidance um, from the board. Before we dig in with options three and four, I just want to see if there are any clarifying questions. You have a question? Welcome. Uh, Mr. Simmons is here. Um, I don't know that Dr. Miles is here. The question was, is there someone here from transportation? So I don't think uh, uh, Floyd is here this evening, but if there are specific questions regarding transportation, let's capture this. Um, the idea is we would use those to begin to 
uh, sift through the issues and the other potential creative ideas with any additional data points that were surfaced to inform the next iteration of options uh, for the whole group to consider. One more thing, for the interest of simplicity and making progress this evening, um, I think it might be helpful just to focus on elementary schools just for this evening. Um, it's a big bite as it is, um, and I think that will just help us hone in a little bit. Um, it's a lot to take on elementary, middle, and high school all at the same time, even cognitively and from a data perspective. So let's focus on, on the elementary uh, piece of the puzzle this evening. Yes? Here's what I would say. We are going to continue to iterate the schedule to uh, reflect where we are in the process. And uh, I am going to go on record as saying we're probably not going to be ready to have draft uh, final options for the public on August 12th and 13th. Look, we're going to take um, as much time as is necessary to get this right. It's complicated. It's hard. It's emotional. So uh, we don't want to rush through and just get it done to say we got it done. We obviously do have time constraints uh, in that we really would like to have uh, big pieces of this go into effect in the fall of 20 for many reasons, not the least of which is we have three new schools open, and they have a real effect on a lot of the decisions that we're making. Um, but also because you know we want to try to achieve these goals as soon as we possibly can. But again, we'll take the time we need to take. Thank you, sir. Anything else? All right, so chunk one, uh, clarifying questions about uh, the two newer options, options three and four. Um, this is not the editorializing time. This is just the clarifying questions, anything that needs to be um, surfaced, uh, whether it's uh, on a map or a data point or anything of that nature, and I'll throw it to Matt. Thank you, Superintendent Cameras. And uh, I have a presentation that kind of gives an overview of options three and four. And, um, and then I can, you know, if, if you feel comfortable with that, I can give you the overview that, that I put together in the PowerPoint, and then we can have those clarifying questions maybe to help, that may answer some of the questions you may have. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go, you know, go through the PowerPoint. So as Superintendent Cameron said, we're here on the, uh, uh, July 30th, and we have some, some engagement sessions coming up in August. There's a lot more than what I have listed here, things that the, the, the district is extending beyond my scope to, to, to further engage the public. And so that certainly is a good opportunity for the public. And, uh, and so, but you can see we have a couple more meetings after the August sessions uh, as, it, as it sits now with the timeline. And if we need more, if we need more time, then we can certainly revisit this. Um, the focus tonight is looking at options three and four. I'm bringing back options one and two just so that you can use this for comparison uh, and, and have you guys look at those options and break, them, uh, break down those options and then talk about logistics for the public information sessions coming up. Um, so some follow-up to the meeting two. Um, you had asked about uh, more detail regarding open enrolled and out-of-zone students in terms of the racial composition of the students. Uh, you have those, and everybody committee should have a packet in front of them. One more thing, uh, we are live streaming this meeting, so uh, let all your social networks know um, they can watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. How, how do, how do, uh, it's, on, it's on Facebook, and then we'll be archiving on the rezoning page as well. So, so give, the, give the archive on the rezoning page about 72 hours, just to transcode the full res video, but right now it's on Facebook Live. And it will remain there. For RPS. For RPS, yep. The RBA Schools Facebook page. In addition to the big packet of information, what you'll notice that in the back of this is the, um, we did those live attend matrices that you saw in the background report that shows how many students live and attend. 
and uh, live in and live out, things like that. We've broken that down by race so that you can see how that breaks down the mobility in and out of zone uh, compares in terms of race. You also have an insert here that we've created. This is a separate handout that kind of gives a breakdown in three and four. So you can see what three and four, what changes are three and four include as it relates to some of the new, new options and new things uh, in relation to options one and two. We made a few planning block cuts in the Mary Mumford area because you had talked about trying to give them some relief. And so we made some planning block cuts along Malvern. Uh, looking at seeing if there's any potential in giving Mary Mumford some relief based on the committee feedback. And so you'll see some of the, the options do uh, go down the middle of Malvern to help provide some relief to Mary Mumford. So just for your input, so that you can look at that. And then you also have the feedback that's been received up to, up to July 22nd in your big packet of information. And uh, that is all also available online. Uh, regarding the feedback, there were, um, I know you don't have much time to read it tonight. But there were varied opinions, and uh, most, a lot of the feedback was regarding pairing schools, and there were varied opinions. Some people liked it, and some people don't like it. And so when you look at the feedback, you can take your takeaways. Um, there were questions on why, uh, why we had Thompson Middle School soon to be open in the original options one and two. And uh, you'll see, that's, you guys have already covered that, and not just three and four, Thompson Middle School is, not, is, is assumed to not be in operation as a middle school. In, in the south, and so that's been and, uh, three and four. And then there were some suggested changes, some additional expansion of considerations for pairings. People had, uh, the public had asked about, what about Mumford and Carver, um, or Holton and Ginter Park? Um, and then potentially uh, uh, Mumford and Carey, and then Fox and Carver as a pairing combination. And so those are just some things that we have been hearing and, and as through community dialogue and things like that for you guys to talk about. This is a breakdown of what we've got here. It talks about a summary of the options. So in options three and four, both options move students from Miles Jones to Southampton. Now you had talked about, see, is there any other way, any other area we can pull out of Miles Jones or any of those areas in the Southwest to give them some more relief? And there is an area that we, that we had pulled out uh, into and moved it to Southampton in options three and four that does actually is a viable consideration. So I think that that was a a good, a good suggestion in my opinion, but you can look at that. We also have both options move students from Westover Hills to Blackwell to give Westover Hills some relief where Blackwell has some capacity. And uh, the options three and four differ in the, the, the area or the amount of area that's moved out of Westover. So take that, uh, be mindful of that. Option three builds on the pairing concept. So we started with option two based on your markups on the maps. Uh, but it includes areas to move from Mary Mumford to the paired uh, school model. And so that was, so we, so we, we uh, picked up some of your comments and your markups on the maps and, uh, and incorporated Mary Mumford to help bring them some uh, capacity relief. And that's, um, we also moved um, the Fox Carey pairing line to Lombardi Street, which you guys had talked about, moving it a little bit closer, further away, uh, uh, the Fox line over to Lombardi because of the walkers and things like that. So that's something that you'll see in option three. Um, option four doesn't involve pairing, it's straight rezoning. Um, and it was a build off of option one and that incorporates some changes. Um, you'll see Mary, uh, some more uh, southern part of Mary Mumford is going into Cary in option four as well as some of these other adjustments I have discussed here. Um, no, there were no changes to the northeastern part like the George Mason region of the map and so they, those are still the same as an option one and two show but you know we're, uh, interested in hearing what you have to say if you see any other modifications or any combinations we can certainly look at that and build on these on what we have built for you middle schools uh, three and four some closure of Thompson like I said and then high schools really are just coming along for the ride there's a lot of uh, alignment feeder patterns and things like that but as superintendent camera said we're focusing on elementaries uh, tonight. This is more of a review on what we have, uh, what I've shared with you at the last meeting, so I'm going to get right to options three and four. Um, so in option three, Carrie and Fox are paired, one zone for two schools like we talked about. Uh, you've got K through second grades at Fox and third through fifth grades at Cary, and Woodville and Fairfield Courts paired in option three with K through second grades at Fairfield Court and third through fifth grade at Woodville. 
and that was done to balance utilization. Um, there's a lot of rezoning. Uh, there's rezoning in the uh, north of the river around the, the George Mason area, and also rezoning around the Fox Carry Mumper region and, and uh, Inner Park. A lot of those areas are impacted to balance utilization and also with the effort to better the diversity of schools, like you have indicated. Um, we do have a lot of rezoning around Broad Rock, but we don't have any new concepts for the Broad Rock, Green, Francis area. Those are very similar to what, you, if not identical to what you saw in uh, options one and two. Westover, Blackwell, that's an area where you'll see some differences from, from options one and two. Um, and then option four, no pairing at the elementary level, but rezoning, just like we had in option three. And again, Thompson Middle School is assumed to uh, discontinue as a middle school, which does make improvements to the uh, feeders and things like that. So I'm going to go, I've already covered these advantage limitations for one and two. I'm going to get right to three and four so you guys can focus on your work. If you do want to revisit this or have any questions, we can, we can use these as a guide. Um, and this is all online as well for the public if they want to sort of look back at what, uh, what we shared last time. Here's option three. So option three, I'll start in this region and kind of work my way uh, clockwise. You can see the paired model between Fox and Cary here. Uh, we tried to true, keep along Broad Street, but you'll see one block does extend over with a focus on utilization, but you can let us know what you think of that, if it can fit back in there. Uh, possibly this could stay in Fox and Cary with less Mumford moving out. Um, and uh, that's one thing to consider. This looks the same as the prior options uh, between Lit Holden and Ginner Park. Again, there was conversations about pairing those, something that you, I'd be interested in hearing from you guys. And then uh, this is largely the same as, um, as the pr prior options, this region right here. But this area does differ uh, quite a bit. You'll see here, this is the, the Westover Hills line, the, the black outlines of the current boundaries. So this region of Westover is brought into Blackwell in option uh, three to balance utilization among those schools. There's also a, a pretty large apartment complex right here that's a good distance from, I wouldn't say it's good distance, it's closer to Jones, but it is geographically far enough where those students are not walking to school that's moved to Southampton to, to try to balance utilization as much as you can in this region. So that was something that the committee had provided input on that is, uh, that is a, uh, a concept that we built on. Better balance of utilization, uh, you do have more diversity, a better balance of diversity with the pairing model, um, feeder pattern improvements, um, and then overall just uh, relief and balance of utilization in the option, and, and option three. Um, we're providing capacity relief to Broad Rock and Green is being utilized. You know, take a look at Green. Let me know your thoughts if you think there's too many students in Green, potentially. But, um, but that's something that we have been able to try to leverage that space to help provide as much relief as possible. Um, there are, uh, the pairing is, is something, a limitation is pairing is a new concept to Richmond. And so it's something that's for you guys to, to for, for that, it's, uh, it's going to take some preparation to implement, but it is a successful method that districts use across the school, the, the country. Um, and then, um, Carry is still over 100% in the pairing, in the pairing of option three. But one of the committee members said, well, what about a K345 model, maybe modifying the grade levels? And if you were to take, uh, make a K3 Fox and a 4-5 carry, your utilization would balance a little bit better. Um, and so that's something that, that you could consider. I know there are other issues with testing and things like that, but, um, but that's uh, something to, to consider. Um, Option four is the is a rezoning with no pairing, and this takes the southern area of Munford here. Uh, as the some markups in your notes had some of this going into Cary to give Munford some relief, and then the, the area east of Malvern is feeding into Fox in this model, and then the area on the other side of Broad Street feeds into Carver in this model, and so uh, that's that's something that's new uh, in this option. This is largely the same. You'll see in this area, a smaller section of Blackwell, of West Dover speeding into Blackwell. The other option, it went all the way to this little river here. So that was going with, to Blackwell in, in option three. 
This looks, no, no changes to the green Francis Broad Rock Oak Grove area, it's similar to prior options, but we do move this uh, multifamily uh, development into Southampton, which has a large, a fairly large number of students to give Jones some additional relief. Utilization balance, feeder pattern improvements, uh, those things all exist with this model, this option. Uh, relief to utilization across the board, um, including Munford, and uh, green is being utilized to help pr uh, provide relief to the schools in that region. This option, some of the limitations is that you don't have, that without the pairing, you don't have much of an improvement in the demographics of schools. Uh, this it does impact the largest number of students um, of any option, and then there is an uh, oddly shaped zone for Bellevue. Bellevue kind of stretches all the way up and pulls an area of Fairfield Port, uh, Fairfield Port into Bellevue, which is kind of an abnormal shape for the zone, but it's something to help to, 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 to balance utilization in that area. You still have some overcrowding in option four south of the river, which we know and we're aware of, and um, and uh, we could provide relief to all the schools in this option. So I think I'm going to skip the middle schools and then and then let you guys get right to it. So let me uh, get to the slide where we're talking about the exercise here. And this is all that you could reference online. If you want to look at this, I can kind of give a breakdown of the high schools and middle schools. But what we want you to do, building on what the superintendent camera said, is identify key issues. So what you guys are going to do is you have your, your broken inches are from a regional perspective tonight. You have the northeast area, the northwest, southeast and southwest, and I gave you kind of a little guide of the schools to kind of give you some guidance on how to break those, break up the regions. And what we want you to do is we have some flip charts. We want you to be able to uh, work in your small groups and identify the key issues that relate to the region that you guys are most familiar with and that you live in. Um, and then, and then um, if you feel comfortable, if you think that there's a couple of options that you feel that are ide ideal, or if there are any options that are non-starters, then those are things that you know you could let us know, and, and we may decide not to share, uh, you know, to not take some of those if they're non-starters to the public. But it's very possible that we may just take all four, based on you know what the, as the, as the process evolves. So. Um, and so, do you guys have any questions about that? Sorry, I was going to ask one question. You know, at the beginning of the process, there were like four or five goals that we were to consider and keep in mind as we were going through this. Yes. I know they were all like linear. We had to pick one that took priority. But could we just maybe put that up so we could have that in Certainly. mind? Certainly. And as we yes, the as you work, I'll put those guide, that guiding okay. principle slide for, I think it's principle two that's the most pertinent to you guys as a committee as it relates to some of the guiding principles. I will put those up on the screen when you guys break up uh, into groups. We have the uh, charts here, and we're going to let you guys get started. I think there's some available, there's some more space back here, and I, you know, I would encourage you guys, I know it's a little tight in here tonight, but if you can find space to spread out to do your small group work, you can certainly do that. Is this, are there two people on, in this group right now? One person for representing all these is not here tonight. Okay. I'm not aware of any um, okay. looks like all of the schools are in the east end of the city. Okay. Uh, could we have maybe somebody from, from facilities, maybe you could come over to the northeast area um, to help balance out? And maybe if there's any district officials who are, like maybe board members are uh, straddle different areas, with northeast, northeast, east, northwest. Maybe spread out a little bit if you can, but it, but I do want you guys to be focused on the areas you're most familiar with, okay? We'll get some flip charts over here, and we'll let you guys get to work and start into your conversations, and uh, just let me know how I can help. I just want to note we've been joined by uh, Ms. Burke, Mr. Barlow, and another board member. Thank <laughs> you. 
one of your questions about, uh, you can talk about the
I was on my list of emails for it. Thank you. 
Super helpful to capture that uh, for an updated facilities plan. <clears throat> and option three as it is, there were no adjustments. I thought there was something from four that you wanted to have. Okay. All right, fair enough. Any questions for this group from the other groups? All right, thank you guys. And this is the Southeast group. Based on what we saw, the capacity over here in the Southeast, there's no real wiggle room. We can move kids across lines, but those are like temporary band aids. So, our takeaway from this is that we definitely need a new school in the South Side. 
um, and that drawing the line, you can't guarantee that families are not going to move, that you're not going to have a shift in your numbers. None of those things are definite. The only real thing that we can do is to create a real space for these kids, because otherwise we're just putting band-aids on a situation. Is the new school they suggested alleviating that, or you're saying an additional one on the southwestern? Right. The space that they're saying would alleviate space from all the schools in South Side and Peace to that point. Yeah. Now, Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that there's some kind of community plan for the southeast. Did you, uh, I do, I have a question. Did you mention something about uh, more movement to uh, Oak Grove? Did you guys have, did you guys mark up any suggested changes to the zones or did the brother know the more of the broad concepts that you guys are discussing? No, okay, so as far as the, the, the change, the shift in the numbers, we were thinking that the first shift would come from Broad Rock into Green because of the new school, and then from Broad Rock into Oak Grove and Oak Grove into Blackwell. Okay. To just to alleviate space in Broad Rock, maybe. Okay. Like that was our primary focus. But you said not Francis. Frank, the one option had Francis, uh, and yeah, Francis would be. But they looked at Broad Rock and said that is the option. You mentioned, like, don't do, don't make the adjustment, don't move the kids out of Francis. No, we didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> we didn't say don't move kids. But there is an option that moves from Francis to Broad Rock and then some shuffling to the Oak Grove, Blackwell. Right. So it's almost, almost like a domino, like we just yeah. kind of shift them okay. down the line. Okay, okay. students have to go to two different middle schools and black students have to go to two different middle schools. Um, so instead of going east-west, um, uh, I propose going north-south in the models where Boulevard is a dividing line and everything north of the highway goes, um, uh, north of the highway, everything west of the Boulevard um, is consider under consideration for Cary and everything east would go to Fox. Um, and uh, below the highway, south of the highway, um, Fox would take up um, Oregon Hill, Planning Block 53, and then part of Planning Block 54, um, kind of, it's, you don't have concrete lines, it really depends on the map. So the idea is, um, Matt, if you, sorry. Um, I just wanted to give you a visual. Um, okay. So, um, like, going north, um, for sure, past Albert Hill. Could you hold up the plot? Could you hold the plot, maybe? The couple you hold it up and you point to it? Is that possible? So, at, sorry, at Cary, for sure, going up to Hill. And okay. then above that, it just depends on the mathematics. And then um, for Fox, going for sure um, here and then over, and it just depends on the mathematics. Okay. So the idea is that you solve the middle school problem and all the students can go to one middle school, Benford here and Hill here, and that also works well with the current middle schools that moves less children. And um, the, the purpose is to get better equality between um, Fox and Cary. Okay, okay. So you have your lines there, so I'll take that with me and look at modeling that. Um, we also did, in our group, discuss the, the pros and cons of, um, of pairing Mumford and Cary and Fox and Carver. Um, I can let someone else speak to that. Sure. Um, yeah, we just said that if we we're going to consider pairing and if the idea of pairing is to increase diversity, then we think, or I, we kind of had differing opinions, and um, but there was some agreement around doing that in more than just one school, like more than one parent, right? Like if it's something that's feasible and the school board is you know, willing to make that happen, then that, let's look at it beyond just the, the Fox Carey situation. Did you talk about other pairing considerations or pairing things for, to, to consider? Yeah, like uh, Mumford and Carver, or 
you had said that any of those could work, like any I, of the four, right? I did look at in terms of utilization. I did look at different pairing options, and you know, I think that uh, uh, many combinations of those would work. Yeah. Like Mun Munford Carver is problematic because it's so the distance between yeah. the two schools. But like a, uh, if you look at proximity to the schools, that's the best model for pairing. The closer the buildings are together, so uh, like a Mumford Carey and a Fox Carver would be more ideal in a pairing model than a Mumford Carver because of the distance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I just make a comment about option three? Um, so sure. um, when I was speaking to a principal, um, she just drew my attention to. Um, there's two homeless shelters um, down in the downtown area, which is rezoned to Carver. Um, and um, so she pointed out that that may further concentrate poverty at Carver. And also there's the Westmore Street in Planning Box 74. So um, again. Do you know what Planning Box the other homeless shelters in? I have the address um, and I, I can forward it to you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's Planning Box. I think it might be Planning Box 58. Um, but it's possible. I guess they're in the Fox School Zone, the two homeless shelters. And they currently go to Fox. So in option three, they're rezoned to Carver. She told me that, on, that it changes, but on average, they have 10 students. And they often stay once they get permanent housing. Yeah, that's about average for any RPS school. But the way our McKinney Metro works, based on their either, um, it could be a former address, it could be out of district, that's where they would go to. So just because the shelter's in that zone wouldn't be all the kids go. But around the change in terms of, I think right now we have about 1,300. The student, so that's about average. You mentioned the one, the plan about 58, and you'll email me that location so I can key in on where that is. You mentioned one other development, another yeah, planning block. She, she said there's some on Westmore Street that she wanted to make sure it was still done in the box. Okay, and what planning block is that? Um, If not, you can follow up with me in the email, or we can talk off here after. It's Planning Box 74. 74? Okay. Okay. Um, anything else from, I know that you guys kind of broke up into subsections and work. Anything else for, from your, from you guys focus? Um, okay, so that's some good direction. Okay, what do you, what do you guys discuss? We at the north side of the um, Obama Care Park in Fulton. Um, and then, so the first thing we kind of talked about was one, um, in regards to the guiding principles, is, it, is there a way to maybe like optimize off of different principles based on the location? So, like north of the river, it seems like there's a much a need in a, in a hopefully larger appetite for integration, whereas like south of the river, we're solving really for overcrowding. Um, and so I think that that might help kind of focus us a little bit if we're, you know, looking at, if, if we have something to sort of like, you know, kind of put out there as our North Star. Um, the second thing we talked about were school pairing proposals um, for the North side. We talked about um, a Holton, Inner Park, and Obama pairing, doing a pairing across all three schools. So K to two at Ginner Park and Obama, and three to five at Holton. Um, there's multiple kind of like things to solve for. First of all, like a large, like Henderson is very underutilized right now because a lot of Holton parents don't send, like the majority of Holton parents don't send their, their kids to Henderson. If you have a community, a cohort that already exists, you're more likely to feed into like a middle school. Um, additionally, I think that with a pairing, you have you have to get a whole community to buy in, as opposed to siphoning off a couple blocks where those blocks then can feel like they're being pulled out of their existing community. Um, I, we also said that it would be great to see a pairing option with Carrie and Mumford in Fox and Carver as well 
Um, and then lastly, we talked about this kind of briefly, was like the open enrollment piece. Um, if we remove open enrollment, what does that do? What is kind of the school board's position on it? That's been something that we've talked about a fair amount, like via email, or there's been some discussion via email about it. Um, and I think that if that can solve for part of like the, the overcrowding issues in some of the schools, like maybe we need to revisit or at least recommend the school board revisit that policy. If if uh, I'll model that K two uh, like a, so you're saying one large zone. Take it, take uh, Obama, Gitter Park, and Bolton. Take a one big zone, but then put actually two different zones for the K two. So it would be two different zones for K two. That's right. And then the entire because region. Because Obama and Gitter Park are both decidedly smaller. Than yeah. Bolton. And then the entire region would be three through five. If I get into that, because I haven't tested that, I don't know any stats on that. If that's not feasible, would you like me to look at something more like a Gitter Park Bolton pairing as a? Yeah. I mean, I think that like yes. Okay. I think that a plan B would be a inner park pool. Okay. Yes. Can you, uh, uh, let's, let's hear what you had to ask. Hello? Oh. <laughs> 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 no, I was just asking why, why I went to Obama to the park. I think, so, just from, like, one-off conversations, like, Obama would be the, the least, like, that community is a very tight knit community. From what I've seen, would be the least interested in preparing oh, of all the of all the areas. Um, so. Okay, and I did look at like looked at the feasibility of Ginner Park Holton combo because that was something that was we got public feedback and suggestions on that. And in order for that to work, uh, Ginner Park would be uh, a K one, Holton would be a two five, and your utilization would be balanced, and it certainly would it would better the diversity of both buildings in doing that. But I'll check out the three school pairing and see how that looks as well and get you some information on that. Did anybody else want to comment? Yes. Um, is it appropriate to ask a question about pairing? Absolutely. So um, I'm wondering if, um, as we talk about pairing, if we should consider the effect on students and families, not just in in having potentially to be in two different schools during a particular grade level. Um, I know that as a kid goes from elementary to middle, you have your kids in two different schools, but those are typically different time zones and are different start times, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is it worth considering that we're adding another building, like a family feel to our students? So instead of them belonging you know, instead of them attending one school and, um, you know, knowing those teachers and those students for a full six-year period, especially in those formative years, if the benefits of the pairing outweigh the, how difficult that might be for students, especially yeah. students who come from trauma, who maybe, you know, have housing insecurity or, you know, food insecurity, like putting them in a building, they're going to go potentially to BPI for one year, and then we put them in a school for K2, and then we put them in another school for 3-5. Like, yeah. Is that worth considering? And and where would that consideration, where would that debate take place? Okay. Um, so I did, I, I dug up some, back in 2012, I looked at, you know, doing this over the years. I, I did some research on pairing. And I do have some things, some, some research from a couple of school districts that actually I found on their web page back then where they did some in-depth research. So I kind of piggyback on theirs. And uh, that is something I have shared with RPS. There's one in uh, Framingham, Massachusetts, was uh, they had put out a lot of research. And then Cache County, Utah, did some uh, analysis of parent. And they analyzed the pros and cons. And they, did, they talk about research, but they don't cite where the research came from. But there's a lot of pros and cons to pairing. One of the cons that's common in pairing that you hear from is that an added number of transitions. And students tra have to transition from building to building. So that's something that is a con. But there are uh, many pros that complement that, such as uh, a larger number of teachers great at the same grade level being able to collaborate more. So I will, uh, I will work to get that to you guys and get that in your hands so you guys can see that. I think I found it to be very informative for me and it's something I think that you guys can build on, something that you could see is pros and cons of that. Thank you. Um, one uh, suggestion for the administration 
Um, so I'm really excited about the idea uh, that could bring more, into, you know, more diversity into our schools. Uh, and I, I think that it would, it, it's important that, um, that families understand what that looks like. And perhaps if the administration might organize uh, a dialogue with families to paint that picture, uh, you know, what, what, what could that community look like? What kinds of collaboration could happen between buildings? Um, what would a PTA, would it be a sh could we have a shared PTA? What would be the opportunities for students that, um, that struggle with tra transitions, which, um, which I, I can identify with? I think that, you know, ultimately, as a district, um, for any of these plans to be successful, and this, you know, I talked about it with the group, is that, you know, it's really not the plan itself, but it's what happens after the plan. And, um, and, and what are the things that we could be doing now to, to win that buy-in? And, um, you know, if there are families that are, have anxiety for whatever reason, and I certainly hope that their reason is not racially based, uh, but if there is anxiety, the, the, what, what work can we do now to quell that? Um, because I think that um, if we can paint that picture, you know, and, and show what this could be, that, that really could, I think, help to uh, create that bridge um, on what this new district could look like. Um, so along similar lines, another thing that we talked about uh, in regards to pairing is, um, you know, whether it's Fox Carey or you know, Fox Carver or what have you, or, or even at the other, in other parts of the city as well, was to try to address some of those um, concerns uh, administratively. So to, to, for example, for Fox Carey, if that was one uh, zone with two schools, to really try to frame it and think about it as one school with two locations. And to maybe, maybe perhaps it's one principal, one PTA, four both locations with you know, co-principals or whatever, uh, assistant principals, uh, at the respective locations, something like that to, to try to really create that community as if it's all one cohesive K-5 experience with that happens to take place in two buildings over the course of those years. And I, I think it is common for them for schools to model that. To, to their, they, they align their administrations. If it's, if it's not one principal, it may be like one principal in the AP is in another building, or they but they certainly collaborate together because it is seen as one community, but it being educated in two buildings. Do you have any thoughts, comments uh, about this, about the Northwest area? Okay, good stuff. I, that's good input. What, what do you guys think about uh, you're working on which area? Um, the Northeast. Okay, the Northeast. So, thank you. Uh, she's making me stand up. That's great. The northeast area, and so we're talking about the east end of what we call Churchill. Um, so we basically addressed the um, when you're talking about diversity, and then when you were talking about pairing of schools, we're happy to hear at least I am the conversation that that pairing pairing is going to help with diversity in many of our neighborhoods. But based on the demographics of the East End or the area that was recommended for pairing of Fairfield and Woodville, it's not going to change the diversity at all. But we do understand is that the recommendation was made for pairing to relieve some of the Fairfield because of the capacity. Correct. So therefore, we are we like option four because you're not recommending any pairing. pairing. Um, uh, the, also, what we looked at is that, and I'm just going to say the same thing that she said, but just in a different way. So if I am a mother of three children, and I'm working three jobs, and I have one child in Fairfield in a K-2 situation, and another one in Woodville in a 3-5, possibly another child at um, MLK, Martin Luther King. That's a hardship on me. Um, and I know that you want me to be involved in the school as much as possible. And so now I'm spreading myself in, in a very thin way. So therefore, that is one reason why we are not recommending the pairing, pairing of those two schools. It's not really changing anything. But we do have a recommendation for relieving the capacity 
a fair field, and that is looking at um, moving. If you look at planning um, block 68, which is net right now, it's zoned for Fairfield. But if you look at moving that into the new George Mason or the George Mason, that would help a, a great deal. Okay. Um, and we're also looking at, but in that plan, you also have planning block three, and we're recommending that that would stay in the Bellevue area. You're talking about 20 students. Okay. And that would stay in the Bellevue area. Also addressing the, the fourth bullet, planning for future student population. It was, it, it just, it was something that was just really way, weighing on me. I just couldn't understand why George Mason, the new school, was going to be underutilized in all of the options. But it was explained, and the light bulb went off for me today. So you're looking at planning for future student population trends and future development. And so therefore, we have a lot or a great deal of development that's happening in the East End. And so we're looking at planning for those new students who are coming online to go to a brand new school, George Mason. Um, and Oh, and that Wickham, that Wickham neighborhood then would go um, into the Bellevue. Bellevue, the one that the doctor showed. Yes, Wickham would go into the Bellevue um, okay. school. Okay. Anything else? You, That's it. You did. You did make a comment that that I thought was notable about the current George Mason population. Don't move any of them out of George Mason. Exactly. Keep George Mason. Everybody who's currently at George Mason. Stay don't keep the them in George Mason, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Right. That's extremely important. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, any uh, any other comments from the from the the committee in terms of you know uh, as it relates to this area. Or if not this area, any other general comments or uh, about either, any of the areas or anything related to the rezoning and the conversations that we had this evening? Do you have a comment? Just in, um, just in response to the school hearing, I, we, I'm hoping like that was just on the east end in right. your yes. area. Yes. So if we were to propose, if we were to say we really think hearing is the right answer for. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, because I understand. I think you're right. One of the comments I did hear, and I'm not sure that I heard it correctly, but in that, if you're going to do pairing in a different way, please consider Carver. Please consider, if you're yeah. looking at diversity, please consider Carver Elementary School in some of that pairing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that, that piggybacks on conversations. Fox Carver and Carver, Mumford, Carver, Oh, oh yes, and, and the, again, let me re-emphasize that the reason for the no, no parent is you know, the reason for no parent, again, emphasize because it's not going to change the, the socioeconomic of those two schools um, with the sun. So yeah. it's not changing right. anything, and it's not increasing diversity. In any way at all. Yeah. And I think what what you know what you're saying is pairing can be used as to, to balance equalization, and it can also be used to help uh, balance diversity. Yes. But in the East End, if you got a new George Mason, you can use that to help balance utilization, and pairing isn't going to make any benefit to diversity. So why not use George Mason, leverage the new space of George Mason to balance your utilization, as opposed to impacting communities yeah. through pairing. Yes, and similar to like how we were saying solving for different things in different parts of the city, in some areas you would add a lot in order to like increase the socioeconomic diversity of schools. You would do a lot for schools that are right next to each other in adjoining neighborhoods. And you could do that through pairing. Yeah. Just since Carver was just mentioned, one other thing that, that comes to mind that I think should take into account is that the current um, boundaries of Carver include two huge potential redevelopment areas. 
Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the you know, downtown uh, redevelopment, you know, arena area redevelopment pro proposal, as well as the non area being, um, and those redevelopments could go in different directions, but certainly at least with the downtown proposal, that would be, in theory, bringing in a lot of um, new mm -hmm. residents to that area. And to, to build on that, one of the things is uh, Carver right now is relatively, I wouldn't say underutilized, but they're low. They have about 430 students and a 700 student building. And some of the notes that my analysts gave me about pairing of Fox and Carver is that you could pair those buildings, but you would actually have some excess capacity that you could even look at adding more to it. But you may not want to do that, given the fact that there's potential growth in the area. It may, may be better to leave it with some additional capacity potential because of the future growth potential with through redevelopment that area. So good good comment. That's good good input here. Um, anything anything else from any of the uh, committee members that you guys want to uh, touch touch on or uh, comment on? Yes, ma'am. I think everybody who got my email, um, this is going to sound familiar, but I like to, um, you know, as an advisory committee, I, I think when I look at the data on the open enrollment situation, it can become clear that it's not serving um, the city along the lines of these four goals. Um, and I wonder if at this point we should ask the school board to address open enrollment before lines are redrawn. My concern is you move lines along the Ray Mumford line, which um, our group has proposed, that that just opens more open enrollment seats. Um, and the people who are using open enrollment are typically coming from pockets of affluence. And so um, that doesn't really work with our goals. Okay. <clears throat> I have it noted. Um, I have that noted and I'll follow up our debrief with RPS about your thoughts on open enrollment and, and I will discuss with them and, and you know continue to have the discussion and build on the discussion of open enrollment and then the, the concept of pairing and things like that. Sorry, just because it's an open That's okay. Uh, yeah, perfect. With open enrollment, I was just going to piggyback off what Kelly said. And yes, if, if RPS considers that making it, you know, with the school board voting on it, something where um, families living in poverty are given priority to some of these schools like um, for Fox, Colton, ones that uh, traditionally those open enrollment seats have gone to wider, more affluent families. And then the second thing, so I think that probably is more of a school board thing to weigh in on and decide how that's going to be handled. But the second thing that I would um, just like to consider is um, the idea that families across RBS can still open enroll. Like you can decide if you are you know, an affluent person living in a certain area, you can decide to go to a global majority school, high poverty school, and, and just make that happen. So kind of if that was something that we did alongside it, I mean, that doesn't need to be the only thing. That may only be like 10 families who choose to do that. But like, if you're at Holton this year, and you believe in diversity and think that's valuable, like just take your feet and go talk to the principal at Gender Park and make it happen. You know, so I think that is something if, if, if we have, People larger than me saying those things, I think there is like some real potential for us to do that. Okay, so I think what, I'm, what I've got in here is some good direction from you on changes, modifications, still, and I'll talk with RPS about how we're going to structure this in terms of what we're going to present to the public uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks and things like that in preparation for that. Sounds like you know the first two options that we gave were just really concepts or things to, to get your gut reaction. Some of it worked, some of it didn't work. It sounds like it may not be as viable to take, it may be better to take concept things that you have incorporated and to maybe build like maybe three options that build like a, some, uh, like a pairing scenario and then something with rezoning, but that picks up some of the rezoning comments you talked about with the Southwest and maybe just different looks that build on the, op, the four options that we've done today and then have those be something that um, that we share with the public. But I, I, I'm just thinking this out loud with you guys. I don't want to take seven or eight options to the public. 
And I think that's going to be overwhelming for them. But, you know, I'll talk with RPS about the best way to structure that and to formulate that. But I can, in my mind, I can see maybe three different options that, that have these concepts all built into three options that, that differ and, and give different looks. One thought on that. I think that the piece that I that I think is really important to make sure the public is aware of is that this is like that these are still very much in a conceptual space and that there is no like we're not in a place where we're making this recommendation. Like I think that it's very important to we have you know, people have been reaching out to me and saying, Oh my gosh, what is up with these maps or I can't you know and I'm like this is just like something to work off of. Right. It's, a, it's a very initial right. problem that pay, you know, proposal. And so I think that that piece is important with whatever, like understanding the timeline, understanding how to provide feedback with whatever we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, and stressing that these are draft and subject to change as, they, as we continue to study is important. Thank you. Um, um, no, 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 you're good. Oh, that's <laughs> It's okay. I want to say that I think we we are concerned about our children going to school and getting the best quality education. Uh, for the leaders of the black community and for people like myself, I, I want to ensure that there is diversity. I want to see us break up uh, the housing development where you have the majority of low-income black kids grouped into schools that's breeding poverty. And if we don't do something to bring these kids out of poverty, you're not going to do anything in terms of alleviating crime and uh, hopelessness and people saying you have to knock on the door to get the kids to get to school. That means that we're there. Uh, we need to do something different here. We can take a school such as Bellevue and we can make that school something very, very creative. And then you can have open enrollment where none blacks and anyone else say, this is a good project, this is a good school, Mr. Superintendent, this is creative, and we want our kids to go there. That's how we're going to get this diversity. And I'm hoping that we all are sincere about it. We want to live in a city where we have a lot of fun. And if you have kids who are breaking in schools in the evenings to get food, and you got kids who don't really get to go to school. We got to fix that. And, and all of us in this room, we need to work on fixing that. And that's what I'm hoping that we are doing here. We're going to have diversity. And we have to finish. Thank you. Did you have something to say? I was already going to go over. And I will not say, as you have two questions. One, I am a bit uh, concerned as we talk about parenting, and we are not, maybe this has been discussed, in, but we're not considering pre-K in the equation. I just heard um, um, a committee member talk about three different, three different transitions. I'm sorry, can you hear me? I just heard a committee member talk about three different transitions with parents. So you have pre-K, then K through uh, second, and then third through fifth. So I, I think it's very important as we talk about it, we're going to really be serious about a pairing option. Uh, Pre-K has to, in my opinion, has to be in that equation. Um, there are schools, uh, my son went to a school, pre-K through second, and then third through fifth. And that worked. Um, and so it just... Yeah, by them. And then second, I hope that we don't go too much further along without having the city come here. When is the city scheduled for us to talk about? We just heard about numerous developments, but we haven't seen them. We don't know in the East End with these developments if they're all, you know, for uh, families or if they're, you know, more of the smaller households. I mean, so it was good to know that. Um, before we go too much further than one. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, on that last point, Ms. Kelsey, we will certainly figure out a time to schedule that for them to come and share. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to everybody for the very productive conversations this evening. Um, I think that gives Mr. Parker a lot to go back 
and create um, the next set of options that probably more robustly reflect um, what is on the hearts and minds of, of everybody here today. <clears throat> we have the next set of uh, RIC meetings or regional meetings. So obviously everyone is welcome, but the focus will be on that part of the city. And so um, August 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. <clears throat> and so the goal will be, Matt, will we have, I'm assuming, the next round of options? Yeah. So we'll take all of this, create options, uh, what are we up to? Five, six, or seven, whatever. Maybe A, B, and C. Uh, yeah, yeah, just switch it up, yeah. <laughs> whatever. There are many. There'll be new, new, new options. Um, and that, that will be then the focus of, of those regional sessions. Um, with the hope of beginning to see if there's some consensus around where it's heading. I want to be absolutely clear, no decisions. No decisions are really made until it goes back to the school board. Let's, let's just be very clear about this. So there's still a very long road ahead and to the comments that were made. This is an opportunity for people to speak up, weigh in, share their thoughts. And I'm not convinced we have surfaced all the best and creative ideas yet. Uh, there's probably more out there that still needs to be um, discussed and brought to the table to ultimately uh, land this uh, with a, a comprehensive proposal. Dr. Harris. The one thing I would say is for the community meetings, the 13, 14, and 15, we tried to have knowing that um, Matt would be here all three of those days, have three meetings on each of those days so that we can have proper present in all nine districts and based on community feedback, really use that time to look at the maps and really dig deeper into the questions. Because we added so many community meetings, um, some people really appreciated just to have a container to ask questions, but if we can communicate, and we'll do that too as administration, the 13th through 15th will have the maps. Those will be led by proper, so we can just dive deeper. And then we'll also have the maps available in City Hall, so any member of the public, we also heard that. If I just want to come look at the maps, we'll have that up, and we'll make that announcement via online, too. And then the last thing I want to name, and speaking about diversity, um, a lot of our feedback has not been representative of all of our students and families in RPS. Um, they're largely coming from our white families. Um, and I want to make sure myself, Daryl, um, Amelia, people on the engagement team, we also want to know we have to be a little bit more deliberate about making sure we are in the community. So we've also planned additional meetings as living room chats and the Fulton community um, and different communities just to make sure we're getting all voices at the table um, and would encourage everybody to do the same. If we are feeling our feedback is not representative as members, I think we all need to make that commitment to make sure all those voices are heard. Thank you. Sarah, real quick. What, what, what maps are going to be at the 13, 14, 15 meeting? Like what options are going to be there? So that if we go to those meetings, we're able to speak to that. I'm hoping Matt's going to say five, six, and seven. I can do I can do five, six, and seven. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, reflective of what was discussed tonight. So I will. So five, six, and seven. They will be built on what you guys discussed. So there will be a rezoning, some rezoning scenarios, building on you know the southwest. People said that they liked a certain option in the southwest, so I may lock that in. With like Broad Rock, Westover, and Blackwell, that may be a different look for rezoning. And then that rezoning combination for Cary and Fox, you know, the north south kind of configuration, that'll be, I think that, you know, that could be like an option five. Then option six and seven will be different looks at the different pairing combos and things like that. So, really, what we want to do is put three options together that capture all of your input up to this date and, um, and then be able to understand what we're getting from different ones knowing that we could take pieces and parts of those three new ones and you know put a hybrid together when they finally come up to your recommendation of what works so it could be like five six and seven but you know then we have one through four there you know but the focus will be on the, the three most evolved options which are five six and seven um okay we're almost at time and we were going to have a quick 
very quick presentation, and Ms. Page looks like she would like to say a few concluding thoughts. So can we do the quick presentation and then your concluding thoughts? All right, thank you. I don't want to stand in the way of John Page, right? Um, my name is Ruth Morrison. I work at the Health District. Um, I, it, it is very brief, but to uh, Dr. Harris's point and certainly uh, the superintendent's point about getting more voices in the mix, um, just wanted to brief you guys on a project that our health district with the BCU Center on Society and Health is running for the next couple of months to indeed serve that exact goal to try to go in to, to our community leaders and to our community organizations to bring this, or, bring this conversation there, host the conversation at that level, um, and be able to bring feedback back in. So I'll just walk you briefly through um, the scope of it, and we can talk offline later if, if you have questions or I can fill in more. Um, so uh, if you want more information, there's more information about the project through our funder, which is the Urban Institute. Um, basically, the, the broad uh, request that we responded to was, you know, what's happening in our city? that presents an opportunity to change systems, change policies, change environments in such a way that will impact equitable outcomes. The funder is most interested, and certainly our health district is very interested in health outcomes, but when we think about where health outcomes come from, those are obviously very multifaceted. Education has a huge, huge impact on that, right? Um, so we essentially applied for this funding opportunity um, to work on a factor that is outside of that traditional model of where health comes from. So it's not just the doctors that we see and um, the behaviors that we have, but those systemic things, like what are the options that are available to us in education, right? So the scope of what we're working on, um, I'll walk you through briefly. So we want to support the rezoning process by uh, going to, into community organizations and having them host these conversations like the conversation that you all had tonight. So very much like what you guys are doing, pouring over maps, working with organizations to do that with their stakeholders and their leadership, right? Um, we're gonna leverage some relevant data into that. So certainly data around educational outcomes and around health outcomes will sort of be layered on top of each other such that we're not just saying, look at the map of where we're moving school districts around, but how is that connected to broader variables? Um, and we want to bring that back into this process, so give poor Matthew Cropper more <laughs> um, to, to juggle. In addition to all of the public meetings that the administration is hosting, we want to throw more into the pot. So um, briefly speaking, if this is the, the process that's being run by the RAC and the administration jointly, our project, the Power and Healthy Lives Project, sits kind of just outside of it, but we essentially just want to be an input mechanism that can get integrated in. So the purpose of my being here tonight is to A, let you all know that this is happening, um, and B, uh, have, an, have an opportunity to hear from you all if there are particular things you want us to be really mindful of asking about, so that our sessions indeed ask the questions that you most want boiled into Mr. Cropper's process, right? Um, I, I would imagine that would be similar to the questions that you guys are juggling, but you'll tell me. So the organizations that we're working with are indeed the ones that are, you know, they're not represented in the room today. So we have community health workers that work in the big six public housing projects. They will be hosting sessions, um, the Neighborhood Resource Center in Fulton Hill, the Six Points Innovation Center in Highland Park, Art 180 in Jackson Ward and a number of others. So um, we're still confirming dates and times for a lot of these, but we're anticipating hosting anywhere between 10 and a dozen of these between August and October. So that's my brief comments to give you some orientation around this. I'll be here for the duration of the trickle out. If they want to share ideas with you, um, can we get your email out to everybody? Yep. One. Uh, and two, once you have the dates and times, we'll get them and share them out with the whole group, get them on the website and everything. Yep. Thank you, Ruth. Appreciate it. The page. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I just would like to say thank you on behalf of the school board. Thank you for your commitment and your willingness to do this hard work. This is really hard work. And with taking your feedback, Seriously, so it's not falling on deaf ears. But as 
Ms. Trevor said, we really talking about diversity, really educating all children to receive a high quality education. This work is necessary. And just to also, if you visit the RPS website, we, been, we listen, we've heard your feedback. So we made updates to the website. <coughs> Click on each meeting, you'll see information discussed or documents that have been provided at the various meetings. You click on their meeting date, also the minutes of the meeting, the maps. So visit the website. But again, again, we just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a good evening. Thank you.